as an entrepreneur, I think that we all get so engrossed in our work. We are, we are laser focused um, because you set one goal and by the time you complete it, you already have three additional that's in your head that you're already working on. Can you talk to me about some of the sacrifices you've encountered over the years? Obviously, you are doing a lot. But again, you're working within the same 24 hours that I am and everybody else is. There's yeah. something in your life that has fallen through the cracks. What is it and what would you tell any entrepreneurs coming up? Look, I, I've been wildly successful, but keep your eye on the prize in this area as well. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you say that because um, I tweeted something that went viral um, back in December, December 1st of 2019. And my tweet was, I sacrificed my 20s. You know, I worked 60 to 80 hours a week, my entire 20s. And then at 41, um, I'm willing to buy, almost, I'm, I'm able to buy almost anything that I want. And I said something like, I'm still waiting for that regret to kick in. And there were varying responses to that tweet. You know, I, I got the, you know, the folks who kind of are, had that Mamba mentality, like, you know, you like, you know, Co Kobe was a beast. You know what I mean? He had very much, I mean, he was 100% drive and work ethic. And there are people who can understand and appreciate that. And then you kind of had this like, you know, anti-hustle porn culture, right? You know, like, you ain't got to work that hard. Like, why you got to, like, you need balance, everything in balance. You know, and, and for me and how I kind of promoted that was, you know, I'm cool with working hard early in life. You know, I'm, I'm cool with like, you know, I don't, I don't work as hard today as I did back in my, back in my twenties. I'm not doing 80 hour weeks anymore. I mean, a lot of, a lot of this, while it sounds like a lot, I have, I put a lot of things on kind of autopilot. I mean, all of my renos, for example, are literally full gut job rehabs at this point. So, you know, what's my tenants really, what are they really calling me about? Like you got a brand new house, all new plumbing, all new electric, all new HVAC, you got a brand new roof, all new windows. Like what we got to talk about at this point, other than is your rent in by the fifth? Um, <laughs> So, you know, so a lot of, a lot of my life is in fact on autopilot. Most stockbrokers don't really work that hard. Once you got a client base, I mean, I, I was pounding them phones trying to get new clients, you know, once they trust you, you know, I, like I don't have to watch the stock market every day for or all, you know, all day, every day for the stock market to do what it's going to do. It will work whether I'm like sitting there, you know, watching screens or not, it's still going to do what it's going to do. Um, so a lot of that is in fact on, um, on autopilot, but have I made sacrifices that some people aren't willing to do? Sure. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not married. I don't like people, like a lot of people who, who were commenting on that, well, where your husband, girl, where your kids, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, like uh, that's not a, like, there, there are different things that are important to us. There are different things that we value. I am no more or less of a woman because, you know, of the decisions that I made. My dogs are my kids. My houses are my kids. And, you know, I focus on what's important, what's important to me. When I want to date, I date. When I don't, I, you know, when I don't feel like being bothered, I, I go somewhere and count my money. Like, you know, that's, that's, I do, <laughs> talk, I do what talk, I do. Talk, Aisha. Listen, I do what I do, you do what you do, you know? So, <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, particularly when a black woman talks her shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when, when, when a Gary V says, you know, and sometimes I'll say very similar to things to what he says, and it's received very differently when a white man says it uh, versus when a black man, you know, when a, when a black man or a black woman, when they say it, or even a black man, like when, you know, we, we talk about this Mamba mentality and we talk about the ethic and, and drive that Kobe had, but when a black woman says it, it's like, where your husband at? Where your kids at? You know what I mean? It's like, you just said you love the Mamba mentality, but not when I say it. You don't like my Mamba, but you... So, um, so I focus on what's, what's important to, to, to me. You know, I, um, I try to make sure that um, I have no regrets. My grandmother in her final, in the final year, years of her life, um, she passed last May. She was, she was sick towards the end. Um, my freedom and flexibility afforded me the opportunity to help my mom immensely. I got to take my grandmother to a lot of her doctor's appointments. I could, I could blow out in the middle of the day to make sure that, you know, I sat there in her doctor's appointments with her. I sat, you know, I sat in the hospital with her for, for days. Like me having the flexibility to be able to do that, um, that to me is worth everything. I'm my boss, you know, I'm the boss. Like I, I don't have to call someone and say, Hey, can I take some time? Like, you know, that to me is important. That to me is, is balance. Um, but you know, to each his own. I'm on this mission 
for relatively simple purpose. You know, when, when, when I was coming up, born and raised in the South Bronx, it looked like Beirut. Yep. I made it out. God bless me. And I tried to do what I do and speak to people like yourself. Because number one, like you, you like me, you said it earlier, the people who were doing well in our communities, they were drug dealers. Yep. And, and that's just what it was. It's no knock. That, that's what it was. Yep. But now the face of success has changed. And my background's in music. It's in marketing. But I never was a guy who was in front of the camera, in front of the microphone. It never interests me. And I just want to educate and I want to inspire people who look like me and come from the same impoverished neighborhoods as I come from. Yep. So before we close this out, I'm just curious, what's your motivation? Why do you do what you do? Why is it so important for you to educate at the level that you're educating? Because you could simply be a multimillionaire off on a yacht somewhere with your feet up, but you're making a conscious effort to give back to that same hood that you spoke about again and again and again in this very interview. You're not running away from your people. And you're giving back to them. It's, it's that old saying, you can give a man a fish and he'll eat for a night. You teach him to fish and he'll eat forever. Yep. You're teaching our people to fish. Why is it so important to you? Um, that's a great question. I believe, I personally believe it's our responsibility too. I believe that like, if you made it out of the hood, right? If you made it out of, um, the trauma that is poverty, right? Um, because poverty is traumatizing. It is like we went through some shit we should have never seen in our lives, right? You know, as as kids, like we shouldn't we should have seen a lot of the stuff that we saw. You know, what I mean, we we shouldn't have known what crack valves were as kids and, and kicked them. Up. Like there, there's a lot of stuff that we should not have been exposed to. Um, I believe that if you if you make it out of the circumstance that is poverty and leaves black and brown people completely open to being killed by police officers, um, being marginalized, being the last to being hired, the first to, first to be fired. I believe if you make it out of those circumstances that are poverty, it is your responsibility to go back and teach people how to do the exact same thing that you did, right? Because otherwise we all lose, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm out here trying to normalize, normalize black wealth that, that, that doesn't look like you have to be an actress or an actor, or you have to be a professional athlete, or you have to be a drug dealer. People who are normal people who you wouldn't otherwise recognize from anywhere other than she out here getting it. He out here just getting it legally and out here teaching people how to do the exact same thing. Um, I've been reading a lot. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of the gentleman, um, Dr. Claude Anderson, right? Um, and he talks about the benefits and power of group economics and, and group wealth, you know, us as a people. And, you know, right now we're in one of the, arguably one of the, the, the biggest elections that, that we'll probably see in our lifetime, right, this, this upcoming November. Um, and, and Dr. Anderson talks a lot about um, voting powers and political power and, and voting rights. And quite frankly, you have to have economic power in order to have the political success that, that is needed for us to be able to basically be able to lobby with our voices and lobby with our dollars the way that corporations and, and other communities have been able to. And I think that that's, the, that's one of the things that's lacking, that economic power is one of the things that's lacking, grossly lacking in, in our community. And that's one of the things that little old me is, is, is trying, to, trying to promote. Because if I, can, if I can touch or reach or impact five people, 10 people, a dozen people, a thousand people, however many people I impact them, and they can go out and impact five or 10 or 20, you know, however many people that they can impact. Um, I believe that that's how we'll, we'll start to turn this thing around. We'll start to, we'll start to change this thing. Aisha, where can my audience find you at? Um, yeah, I'm on socials quite a bit. Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, my handle is my name on both at Aisha Selden. 
Um, I wrote a book recently that is really for new investors. Um, it's more, my, more of a mindset book. Uh, it's called Mud to Millions. You can actually get it on Amazon. Uh, and the, the two is the number two. Um, you can actually go to my website, mud2millions.com, and either buy a digital copy directly from my site, or you can go, it'll direct you to Amazon, where you can buy either a paper copy or uh, or Kindle version. Did I, did, did I hear that right? Mud, M-U-D, to millions? Yep, Mud to millions. That's where I got it from, straight out the mud. There you go. There you go. Aisha, this has been my pleasure. <laughs> I've learned so much and, you know, I've watched you from afar and just having the opportunity to sit and talk to you. This conversation has been everything and more that I hope that it would be. You are a true power move maker and I thank you so much for your openness and willingness to share. Thank you, brother. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.